I want to talk about interpreting the derivative. So here's an example. Let's suppose we have a function that relates the price p of a box of sporks, of each box that we sell, to the sales, the total sales of the um, of sporks. And so s is a function of p. So we've got the output s, the input p, and the function is called f. And we'd like to ask, what, what if we took the derivative? That's either you can, oops, this is a p, um, and that's a p. We can either think of that with the notation of f prime of p, or we can use this very suggestive notation ds dp. What is the meaning of that? Okay. And in particular, like what's the meaning of f prime of 2 if you put in a particular number? Okay. Well, there's some very standard formulaic um, phrases for this, and I want to give you the, the two ones I can think of. And they're kind of formulaic, but they really do help. The meaning of any derivative is it's the instantaneous, which means tangent line, not secant, secant line, the instantaneous rate of change of whatever the output is, sales, with respect to whatever the input is, price. That at least gets you started. And it's really a fill in the blank thing. You can just put in whatever the output quantity is, sales, whatever the input it is, price. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, well, another phrase is, it's a more of an if then thing. Say, I'm gonna wiggle something, I see what else wiggles. If I increase the price by a unit amount, by one, then the sales will increase by roughly, and the roughly is because this is all about approximating, this is going to be ds not delta s, by roughly f prime of p. And and it, we can say, um, to, we can add to that, and if I increase the price by a smaller amount, a unit amount might actually be a pretty big increase, and this might be a terrible approximation, then the sales will increase by proportionately less. So like if I increase it by half, increase the price by half, roughly I'm going to get this amount of, of increase in the price. So for example, let's let's look at very something very explicit. Suppose I know that f prime of 2 equals negative 5,000. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, it doesn't mean it's not even correct if I don't put units. f prime of 2, negative 5,000 what? Well, the units should be the units of the output, which is sales, which is boxes, over the in units of the input. That's always, always, always the answer to what are its units, and this is dollars. Boxes per dollar. Okay. So what's the meaning? Suppose I knew that f prime of, of 2 was negative 5,000 boxes per dollar, and this negative is going to be important because I said increase and increase here. You might get the impression that that means always I actually do get an increase. Okay. But let's say, or decrease if the derivative is negative. A negative derivative means that when I increase, when I have a rise that's po a run that's positive, the rise will be negative, and so this is going downhill. We've seen that already in graphs. So what would this mean? Okay, so we got the units taken care of. Okay, it's boxes per dollar, and the question is, what, well, what about the positive or negative? Okay, so we've got a negative example. What does this mean? Okay, well, it means that when let's put it into this template up here. If I increase the price by one dollar, then the sales will decrease by roughly 5,000 boxes. And we know it's decrease because of the negative. Let's see if this makes sense. If I increase the price, then yeah, the sales probably do decrease. That makes sense. If this were positive, it would be really weird. It would be something where if I increase the price and nothing else is changing, is what we're assuming, then suddenly the, the, price the sales would increase. That's weird. 
the negative makes a lot more sense. Okay. What if if I increase the price by 10 cents, 0.1 dollar? Then the sales will decrease by roughly, well, the beauty of derivatives is we're just assuming it's, a, it's proportional. But with this approximation, we're going to assume that it decreases by, 100, by 500 boxes. If you want to see that in equations, it's because ds over dp is minus 5,000. And in that second quote, what I assumed was I'm going to say dp is positive 0.1, an increase in price of 0.1. And then if I just rewrite ds equals minus 5,000 times dp and put in dp as 0.01 or 0.1, then that's going to be minus 500. That's making turning this uh, proportional reasoning, this proportionately less thing, into algebra. Okay. So for example, I didn't purposely didn't put a graph up here yet, but the graph might look like this. We might have a graph of of uh, sales. I forgot to change the letters. This would be S. This would be P. Of sales versus price. That's like this, a downhill curve, and this minus 5,000 is the slope of that curve down here. Ooh, it happens to be that the value is close to 5,002, but that's an accident. And um, the idea is that if I wiggle the price a little bit, increase that by 0.1, then the sales are going to decrease. And I can predict roughly what that's going to do just on the basis of this one magic number. Okay.